Welcome back everybody. I want to tell you about a flight I had the other night that really got my attention. And this has never happened to me and uh, it was actually a bit disconcerting and made me a little bit upset as well. Eventually upset at myself. So um, in this night flight I basically took off uh, and uh, as I'm taking off, the airspeed indicator fails. And these are on my Duo GI 275s, which I will show you right now. These are my recently installed Duo GI 275s. Top unit is ADI, AHARS, and autopilot unit, which drives my KFC 150. Bottom unit is a standby ADI unit plus MFD. So it can also display an ADI in case the top unit fails. As a background, uh, the first top unit that was installed uh, was malfunctioning and would show 23 knots just sitting on the ground, not going anywhere, just sitting there and showing 23 knots. The bottom unit would show um, three dashes just like uh, the top one does. And you can switch back and forth pages with the big knob. I, use, I always take off on the uh, HSI map page. Uh, right now it says no GPS position. I'm inside the hangar. I don't have a 530 on and the VFR GPS is just not picking up the satellites correctly. So as I'm taking off, I use a checklist, react, correct runway, engine instruments are good. Look at the airspeed, pops up to 23. They always come up to 23 from 0 to 23. That's when the airspeed comes alive. And I Okay, going up to 23, started moving up a little bit, and I looked out the window for center line and then takeoff point, and look back as I'm I'm pretty light, so I take off pretty quickly. Look back at the airspeed, and it's reading 35 knots, and that's obviously not correct. So I'm really kind of getting pretty cranky because the unit has been in the shop, not really in the shop. They've been it's been in the plane, but it's been multiple configuration changes to see if it can get it to talk to the autopilot to drive it in an ILS uh, mode with a glide slope. It's not driving the glide slope correctly. And so I was concerned that either the unit had failed in the mode with the same malfunction as the first unit that was installed in this or something in the configurations uh, were messed up. So I switched the bottom unit to the ADI page to see if it would read correctly and it was reading exactly the same as the top one so that was not the issue that, that this one had not failed there was just a common issue to both of them that was going on by this time I was up in the air so it's time to fly the airplane and um, I did a round go back around and I landed back on Fernandina um, basically I took off a nine uh, because it was I wanted to play around with my flight director and uh, and it goes over the ocean so I could really basically simulate IFR conditions. Winds were favoring 2.7 a little bit better so for landing I preferred to come back to 2.7 because the winds were favoring it pretty uh, slightly. I figured out what was going on halfway through the flight and uh, I will show you that at the end of the flight. I hope that's a good uh, experience to share with everybody uh, so that hopefully none of you does the same thing as I did. Okay, ready to take off on zero 09. Let's see if everything works right. Line her up. Front end beach traffic, money 405, Charlie Papa departing zero 09, westbound departure. Front end in. All right, engine instruments are right. Okay. Airspeed's alive. Airspeed is not up to takeoff speed as I'm taking off. Well, that's fucked up. So I switch over the bottom unit to its ADI mode and it's reading exactly the same. I thought it might read differently in case it was just a top unit that had a problem. Obviously, it's not the units. It's not the 275s. Something else going on. In the meantime, I gotta fly the airplane, 
So I keep quiet and focus. I think about doing a teardrop turn to get back onto runway 27. That requires too many turns and sort of steep out over the ocean. So I said, nah, let's just do a regular pattern and get back on 27, which winds are favoring somewhat with them being 340 at seven on the ground. Now on my iPad, I look for the synthetic vision page where I may be displaying the ground speed that's coming from the flight stream 210. And um, I find that actually it's not. There, pick it out. It doesn't read the ground speed because it's still connected to the 275s. It has two Bluetooth connections. So I focus on the ground speed on the 530. Much easier anyway. I don't have to look down. I'm crabbing on the upwind leg for 27 since the wind is pretty strong, 15 knots from the north northwest. And I'm trying to think what could be going on. Pretty soon the light bulb will come on. Traffic, Money 495, Charlie Papa, uh, turning uh, left downwind uh, 27, Fernandina, full stop. Actually, crosswind to downwind. So I'm flying by power settings and ground speed. Right now, about 18 inches, and I'm going to slow down to 16. I have to be slow enough to be able to deploy the flaps. So to do that, pretty shortly I'm going to pop the speed brakes, make sure that with the gear down, which I've never retracted, so I could fly the pattern uh, the way I usually would with the gear down. And now I'm about 14 inches, speed brakes out, flaps will be coming down, and you hear the little background static, that's the flaps. Light bulb came on. I know what happened. And I'm not too happy about it. That's the 30 degree flaps. From the Dream Beach traffic, Mooney 405, Charlie Papa, left base 27, Fernandina. Stop. It really is a, quite an easy fix here, what the problem is for no airspeed. And I'll be able to fix it on the ground in a relatively short period of time. I'm sure many of you have already figured out what the problem is. Turning final. Front of the beach traffic, morning four nine five Charlie Papa left. Base turning final two seven front of the full stop. I keep my speed up to what I believe will be about eighty, eighty five. I know it's gonna be a bit of a long landing, but that's okay. I got five thousand feet to work with and I prefer to go a little faster and let it float down the runway a little bit than to come short and stall. Turns out to be actually a pretty good landing.
Well, as most of you may have guessed by now, this was the culprit. I left the pitot tube cover on. I got severely distracted during my pre-flight inside the hangar, got three phone calls, interrupted my sequence, and never went back to check to make sure I had removed it. The question for me is why did it even read 23 knots? Why did it even come alive? And I think it's because of this um, drain hole that is exposed that may have done something to keep it, make it think it was alive. Uh, the other thing could be something with Garmin's algorithm and in terms of uh, how it compares ground speed to indicated airspeed and what it displays. I'm not sure. Well, I hope everybody has learned the same lesson I have and not to leave the pitot tube cover on. And if it stays on for some reason or another, hopefully we'll read zero throughout the whole phase of uh, takeoff so that you can abort the takeoff instead of uh, reading your live number and then you continue on with the takeoff, looking back and then finding that it's an erroneous number and having to continue the flight and land back without any kind of airspeed. Everybody have a safe flights and see you in the next video.